Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friends. Grab yourself a hot cup of tea, and uh, we're going to have a good, good time on this program because you're going to meet a lady who is the living embodiment of what the power of God can do to a woman and for a woman. Uh, you, might, you might feel your family's in shambles. God can bring that together. He did for my guest today. And she's on the road and she's speaking and she's writing books. And she is uh, singing. She's a professional singer. Her name is Tempe Brown. And I think there are so many parts of her testimony that you can relate to. But the one thing I really noticed was how God brought that family back together. They're all in his family today. So you're going to meet Tempe in just a couple of minutes. And I just want you to know how welcome you are and how we appreciate all of your letters, your cards, your emails. Um, it means so, so much. And if we could, we would get together and throw a party for you and hug you real good. But thank you for all you do for Home Keepers. I'm going to join Stephanie in a minute and talk about a no-bake key lime pie. Uh, that is just a requirement in Florida that you know how to make a key lime pie. And there's many, many variations of it. Uh, so we'll see how this one is. It's really pretty simple. Before I join her, though, I want to offer you this little, little book. But you might recognize the pretty face on it, and that's Beth Moore. And uh, she has an amazing ministry, uh, two women. And I've been in some of her services, and they, they are really powerful. She's a great writer. Uh, she's authored many books. And this one is just kind of a, taking the, the meat out of a book she wrote on the promise of security. And uh, you would have to agree that we are living in an insecure world today. It seems like we're hearing of somebody blowing up a school or mass murders. Uh, we almost become desensitized to them. But they create insecurity. And you might feel insecure, insecure about yourself about your presentation, about your abilities and all. She answers all of these with scripture and then she expands on the scripture that pre she presents to you. This is just a derivative of a, a much bigger book that she wrote. So we're offering this to all of you wonderful viewers for any gift to homekeepers. And we kind of do ask you to give your best gift, but any gift. And you can use your credit card or your debit card on that 800 number that's on your screen right now or uh, write to us if you still send checks like I do. Uh, Homekeepers Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And either way, we uh, thank you so, so very, very much. And Stephanie's joining me now, and I'm smelling this. Can you smell it this lime? It makes my little things right here go crazy. Uh -huh. Like the, the scent is so good. It's so nice. And we're talking about the, the um, lime. Fresh key lime. lime. Mm. Mm -hmm. My mouth is watering, mm -hmm. like for real. Okay. Well, if there, I don't know if every state has a signature kind of offering sure. of uh, food, but this one does, and it's for sure. This is us. I yes. suppose Arkansas would be biscuits and gravy. Probably. <laughs> my mother-in-law could make the best, and she would spoil Meredith. Meredith's my daughter, and she'd bring her biscuits and gravy in bed. Oh, it's a good nana, nice. isn't it? That's yes. So fabulous. Yes, yes. So, you know, you don't know how I was sick last week. You do not know how good you feel when you feel good mm -hmm. until you feel that bad. And I'm feeling so much better, and I'm just so thankful. I know it. And she was talking about that this morning, uh, the great contrast. And thank God for you health. You just don't know how mm -hmm. good you feel when you feel good. Okay, I have a cup of whipping cream I'm going to finish whipping up here. I have eight ounces of cream cheese that softened, a cup of um, the sweetened condensed milk. Mm -hmm. This is a healthy recipe, folks. Yes. And a half a cup of key lime juice. And then you're just making pretties for the top pretties, of the yeah, pie. Pretties, yeah. I'm going to make some little... Oh. There we go. Okay, I'm good. So I'm just stiffening this up a little bit, and then I'm going to jump right over to the um, cream cheese. And the recipe comes with uh, ingredients and the way to make a crust, but we're lazy. We always buy the crust. You know, there was a day when I would have said, oh, I will make the crust from scratch. Today <laughs> is not that day. I'm, Today's I'm, not the day. No, no, I am to the point where I'm like, you know what? Whatever I can do to make it more simple, I'm gonna do it, okay? Uh -huh. 
I'm getting there. We, we, we've we lost our little buttons on the top of our mixer. Oh. <laughs> so I'm getting there. I'm well, just stiffening this up and you're making pretty. Mm -hmm. I wonder if, you know, people like my great, great grandmother, whoever could come back and see how easy cooking is oh, today. Oh, especially this. You hear key lime pie and you think, forget it. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to do that, but. This is so super simple. So this is just eight ounces of cream cheese that we, we softened. We're just making it smooth. And again, we just bought the crusts. We, we didn't even make it. The directions come for you to make it. We did not. And maybe you've noticed that when we do a regular pie, we buy the crust for that too. It's just easier. Why do all the work when it's already been done mm -hmm. for you? So this is a... Now this is a naughty oh. one, and so we say just take a small slice. This is, It's all about portions, right? That's what mm -hmm. I'm learning. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm learning. It's all about portions. So I'm mixing this in slowly. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff, right? That's good TV right there, okay? That is good <laughs> television. Oh yes. Okay, and then I have a half a cup of key lime juice. Yes, and in Florida, you can buy key lime juice. I imagine you could buy it anywhere. Probably. It's just in your juice uh, counter in your supermarket? Yeah, your juice counter. Your juice aisle. Juice department. <laughs> doesn't, it, doesn't it aggravate you if you go to a store a long time and you know where every thing is, and then they change My it. store has just done this. Did okay? they? Yes, they, my store has just Have you registered your the whole thing. I and know, and I can't I find anything. I had all of my um, shopping according to aisle, mm -hmm. because I like to be organized. Mm -hmm. And then I go in there, and now I just have to walk up in every single aisle yes, until I figure don't it do all that. out again. Any I don't know why they, like, why? Why yeah, would you any do of that? the corporate people watching this show. Let me know what is it. the. There's got to be a, a mental game to it, or mm -hmm. there's got to be some reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, isn't that lovely? I'm gonna fold in this whipping cream, and that's the real thing. I I personally don't like Cool Whip. I I don't know what's in it. I she, like she, I like to whip it, boy, and it's oh. you know it's fresh. <laughs> you know it's fresh. She likes to mm. whip it. Okay, so then we're just gonna pour, I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna gently fold this in. We're gonna put it in the crust. And as Floridians, we recognize there's a lot of different ways to make this pie. The interesting thing is they taste pretty much the same because a key lime is a key lime. Sometimes, yes. But this one is really simple. I remember we made one years ago. Here? I don't think it, yeah, you and I. I don't think, something wasn't was right. Was it hard? Yeah, something wasn't right. Okay, so go ahead and put some pretties on there. Mm-hmm. Right okay, there. We'll yeah. Go. yeah. Oh, right there, like, hello, mm -hmm. hello, professional pie. That's kind of all it needs. Really? Yeah, I'm not so, gonna put the, okay. can you put these on, the slices on too, but. Yeah, just to make it look pretty. We have a, uh, we have a guest timeline. Yes. Super, super Oh, simple. I have a feeling if you would fix this for your family or for guests. You would be a hero. Mm -hmm. Hurry. Uh -huh. There you go. It comes out good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. One of the viewers told me to quit licking my fingers. Hey, you're too late. I've licked them all my life. <laughs> and why? Don't you lick your fingers oh, at home? Oh, my. It is so light. Oh, so good. And loaded with calories and a lot of other things. But if you want this, if you want this recipe, the information is coming up on your screen. We'll be glad to get it to you at no cost. I want you to meet Tempe Brown right now. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. It's a delight for me to introduce to you Tempe Brown, one of the most multi-talented guests ever been on this show. Thank you for coming. Thank you for well, having she's me. She's a speaker. She's an author. I've got her books here. And uh, you traveled with a band for quite a while as, as the soloist. Uh, was it a country style band or what kind of music did you do? Well, we did a little bit of everything because we wanted to stay on the road. And if you can do country and jazz and rock and a show, mm -hmm. which we did, mm -hmm. we can stay on the road. So that's what we did. How long did you do that? Well, I sang in nightclubs for uh, more than I was on the road. Mm -hmm. I was probably in nightclubs about 10 years, and mm -hmm. then I formed my band. And uh, I was only on the road with them for about a year. Mm -hmm. 
And um, sh we have our music and our testimony on CD. I want to show the people these things because I want them to hear sure. the testimony. Of course. I understand this is a novel. That is a suspense novel. And I snuck the gospel into it. <laughs> I, you know, I've had some novelists on here, and they really intrigue me. Um, and some of them have said that when you get started, I'm sure you do it at your computer. I do. Uh, and the character will kind of take on life and take turns and all that you hadn't planned in the beginning. They come very they actually alive do. to you. It's amazing. It's almost like having a movie running in your mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't get that or whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> it is <app>. either. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called a, a payback game and we will have our information on the screen later. You can check all of this out. I really wanted to uh, talk to you about this child's book. Yes. Uh, it's called The Little Dirt People and what it means to be born again. And you did the illustrations as well. I did. I did. And you speak for Stonecraft. Is there anything Stonecraft. you don't do? Mm -hmm. I don't dance. Oh, you <laughs> don't ask me. <laughs> don't ask me. <laughs> I knew that song. Um, wh what gave you the idea for this? Because I, I urge you to go to the website to uh, really take a look at this. Because we have a lot of children's books, and we've never had a bad one. But this one really kind of gives theology. Well, how it came to me was I speak for the Gideons a lot because mm -hmm. I came to Christ through reading Gideon Bibles while mm -hmm. on the road with my band. And uh, I was supposed to share my testimony in a morning worship service. It was a Gideon service where they let them come and give their report. And uh, good Gideons always get there early, boy. Uh -huh. And we got there early, and evidently one of the teachers didn't show up, so they grabbed me. Mm -hmm. We want you to teach the little kids this morning. I went, what? And so I got in a corner and just cried out to God and said, help. And he gave me one word, fellowship. That's all I got. So they came and got me, said, we, we got to get in there. So here's all these little kids looking at me like a bunch of little deer caught in the headlights. Just, uh -huh. who are you, you know? Yeah. And I said, how many of you kids understand fellowship? And they just looked at me. And I said, um, well, you know, kitty cats like to hang out with kitty cats. And um, doggies <laughs> like to hang out with doggies. And people like to hang out with people. And, and the book was born. <laughs> and Lord, you can jump in every time now. I don't know where we're going with this. And then he showed me. And I said, who do you suppose God wants to hang out with? A little kid on the front row. A spirit? I said, that's right. But God had this problem. He made these little dirt people. Can you imagine trying to fellowship with a little clod of dirt? And so God fixed that. He breathed his very own spirit into those little dirt people, and he made them living spirit people. Mm -hmm. And then he was able to fellowship with them spirit to spirit. And then he said, okay, you guys, you can eat of every tree in the garden except that one. You eat of that one, why, you'll surely die. Well, we all know they ate mm -hmm. of it, and they didn't keel and, over and drop dead. Yeah, and this so book, what died? This book goes to right to Calvary. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, small, so um, I really want to really uh, tell you what a great, great book this is. And um, the, the wonderful thing about kids, they want you to read it to them again. Yes, they, they do. They want you to point. And so if if you've got a little kid and they like for you to read to them, and they they're the kind that want it again. Because, you know, I read one to my grandson once and miss, missed a word, and he corrected me. Oh. Because he knew the book so well. <laughs> right. You know. And, uh, but if they get this, they're going to have theology that will take them. Adults get saved reading this book. Mm -hmm. When I was in uh, Phoenix, Arizona speaking, uh, there was a sort of a mini retreat for a lot of the Stonecroft leaders, and we had it in this big, beautiful home, and they asked me to bring my books with me. So after it was all over, the hostess said, how many of you books do you have left? I said, about 10. She said, well, I want them. So she bought them from me, and I heard later that her husband came home from work, and he sat down, and there's these books by his chair. So he picks it up, and he's reading it, and he sets it down, and he's thinking about it, and he picks it up and reads it again, and he got saved, and he was a judge. Wow. <laughs> How lovely is that? Uh -huh. But it's just su such a simple yeah, explanation. It, it kind of takes you through the Bible. It does. Yeah. All right. Uh, I want the people to hear your testimony because I love the just keep validating the truth of scripture the truth of creation the truth of Jesus yes and everything he came to do and uh, you were 
Did you grow up in this real positive church or did you just attend there once in a while? I grew up in a church that mostly preached the power of positive thinking. Mm -hmm. We were the most positive sinners you ever saw in your mm -hmm. life. <laughs> <laughs> but we did not well, know Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, you, you were left with three children mm -hmm. and no compass, no moorings. None. If you don't have God in your life, you don't no. have Jesus. And then these life situations hit you. Yes. Uh, then you're going to fall apart. Exactly. So uh, you were on the road with a band, and but you had three children and mm -hmm. they weren't doing well. And right. Two girls and a boy. You sent the boy to his father, and mm -hmm. everybody's right. life was in turmoil. Turmoil. Um, but you were traveling with a band, and that's not a glamorous job no, at all. It isn't. <laughs> a lot of people think it is. It isn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I traveled as a speaker for 20 years. Yes, and just on weekends, yeah. uh, and it's not—it's not an easy—it's not an easy life. But you did encounter the Gideon Bibles. Tell us all about that. Well, my two brothers had gotten saved, and they were praying for me and put me on the holy hit list. Mm -hmm. And I was traveling, and uh, and th those Bibles were everywhere in every room, every state, every town, every hotel. And when you're looking for answers, you will pick those things up. And I picked them up, and I began to read them. And um, for the first time, I saw truth. Well, what did you read? Were you in the Gospels? Oh, or? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Um, I stumbled upon, because I didn't know how to read it, mm -hmm. I stumbled upon John 3. Now, of course, <laughs> the famous John 3:16 certainly got my attention and I had heard it before but I didn't know what it meant but it was just a little bit after that because I Arthelene always felt condemned and I didn't know why mm -hmm. well there's the word mm -hmm. and it kind of burned off the page this is the condemnation that light has come into the world but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil and for the first time in my life I knew I was in darkness I did not have that light Jesus Christ that was the missing piece of the puzzle of my life. It was the big hole, and we all have it. We're all born with this mm -hmm. big God-shaped hole, and we try to cram all kinds of things in there mm -hmm. to make ourselves feel better, feel fulfilled, feel something, but the only thing that fits is Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so when I realized that, boy, I hit my knees right there in that Holiday Inn in Owensboro, Kentucky, crying out to I've God. I've preached in Owensboro. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I cried out to him, and I asked him to forgive me of all my sins, and he Im invited him to come in, and he wasted no time at all. I'd been waiting for that prayer for 38 years. And I got up off my knees. A little baby Christian didn't have a clue as to what to do next, so I went down on the stage, looked around. First thing I said was, how come it's so dark in here? It wasn't it any It wasn't darker. dark to you the night before? No, was it, it yeah. wasn't any darker than it had always been. It's just that the light of the world had moved in. Mm -hmm. And when he crawls up from behind your eyes and he's looking around, nothing looks the same ever again. Mm -hmm. And the second thing I noticed is I loved everybody in the room. And that, that was weird. That wasn't a natural tendency, <laughs> that I guess. Was weird. Well, there was a lot of really unlovable people <laughs> in there. But I couldn't help myself. I, I found myself having to tell them about Jesus. And, of course, that went over like a screen door in a submarine. You know, mm -hmm. it really didn't go over too much. But... The thing we need to hear the most is the thing we want to hear the least. Mm -hmm. It's just that way we are. And you kind of lost your job because of your Oh, yes, I right? did. It didn't mm -hmm. last long. Uh -huh. uh, and that was fine. That was fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was glad to get out of there. And uh, this was all in Oklahoma. Yes. Uh, we were pastors in Oklahoma, too. Uh, where were you? My daughter was born there. Oklahoma City. Well, that's where I was born and raised. Is it? Yes. Oh, my, we got to talk. Yes, we do. Uh, <laughs> But your your family was just kind of fragmented. They were. At that time. Yes. Uh, you got in touch with one daughter? I got in touch with, well, I, I called all my kids to tell them that I was off the road. Mm -hmm. I was settled down. But when I got in touch with Mindy, uh, she had moved to Greenville, South Carolina. And she invited me to come there and start my new life with her. And, and that's how I wound up in Greenville, South Carolina. And I love it there. I, it wasn't much to look and at when I first Christian got there, but time? no, no, she, well, now my, my kids, the Lord had been dealing with my children all along. Uh, when we lived in Oklahoma City, uh, neighbor, Christian neighbors would take them to church. And the, of course, I'm sure they were praying all, praying for their evil mother that was in nightclubs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and God bless them for that. Mm -hmm. And um, and so when I spoke to uh, Mindy about coming to Christ, she said, Mama, don't you remember when we lived in Oklahoma City? I visited a little church in the neighborhood, and I came home all excited about Jesus and told you I'd been saved, and you got mad, and you wouldn't let me go back. And I thought, wow, what was that about? Now, I remembered it was the terminology that just irritated me. Get saved, something would just rise up mm -hmm. inside me against that. Well, they're sure not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will never rise up in offense of what Jesus came here to do. It was a very unholy spirit called pride mm -hmm. coming against the very thing my family and I needed the most. And, and I just apologized to her. I said, Mindy, that's probably the worst thing I've ever done to you in my whole life. Will you ever forgive me for that? And that brings such healing. You know, we parents, none of us have done it right. No. I mean, we're all messed up somehow. I mean, even, even Jesus' parents lost him for three days, really. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I want to talk it, about more <laughs> of that when I get to heaven. <laughs> but what we, happened there? Yeah, what happened? But, but it brought healing. And that brought me to Greenville, where exactly where God wanted me to be. And it, it's just an amazing story. And I look back and I think, God, you are so merciful. And you love us so much and in our mess. And your other two children are Christians. Yes, they are. Son and, and a daughter. My son owns a Christian charter bus company in Atlanta called His Majesty Coach. He's doing very, very well. Let's tell him again. Okay, this is in Atlanta. This is a Christian business. Yes, His Majesty Coach. Google it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, beautiful That's a new coaches. Verb. Google. <laughs> it is. Uh, also, uh, your mama got saved before she passed yes, away. Yes, at 83. Never too late. Never I know, too and late. Do you ever sit and think how complete he is? Oh, he wants yeah. all of our family members. He does. Him. He does. And my brothers had come to Christ, and they were praying for the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, my dad was an administrative law judge with the Department of Labor, and so he was in D.C., and he was around that thing. And so my brother Jim sent him Born Again by Chuck Colson, and he read it, and, and then he remembered that uh, C.S. Lewis was mentioned in there, mm -hmm. Mere Christianity, so Daddy asked for that, and uh -huh. Jim sent it to him. And he sent me one, too, which is not re your regular rock and roll yeah. reading, you know. But right. <laughs> but I had already come to Christ, and the Holy Spirit was in me, and he helped me to understand it. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing how the author is in you. Never did understand it before, but now the one that wrote it is in me, and mm -hmm. he's teaching me. Oh, Jesus wow. Jesus bit. I read in your testimony that you, you quit smoking. And did something just tell you? Well, I had just left my band, left everything in San Angelo, Texas, and I was driving north, going somewhere in Oklahoma, didn't, wasn't sure where I was mm -hmm. supposed to go. And I turned on the radio, and I wanted to hear anything about God, anything and anything. Here's this old preacher, and he's preaching away, and he said, Don't you know that smoking is like uh, throwing a, a stink bomb in the sanctuary? And I went, Oh, my God. And I reached back, had a brand new <laughs> carton of cigarettes, rolled down Ooh, the window, and threw them out. That was expensive. <laughs> and that was I saw it. somebody buy a carton of cigarettes not too far ago. I thought, I couldn't. No. Not too long ago. I thought, well, I they weren't that, that expensive then, but mm -hmm. certainly... I feel, Arthelene, that when the conviction is there, mm -hmm. the power to do something about it is there. Mm -hmm. But we rationalize these things away. And, oh, well, I'll do it sometime, well, blah, it, blah, blah. Well, it brought back memories. Uh, my background is Pentecostal, and they preached against smoking and yes. drinking. Now, back then, you had magazines with pictures of doctors. Oh, yes. Doctors. And all the movie stars, of recommending course. Recommending a certain mm -hmm. cigarette. You know, his oh. white coat, his doctor coat, his stethoscope. Yeah. But the Holy... And we had no we had no statistics on cancer. Not then. Nothing. Mm -mm. Everybody did it. But the Holy Spirit told the Pentecostals, don't do it. Yes. And our people were healthier. Yes. You and the Holy the Spirit, through that preacher, told me. Uh-huh. And... And right. I'm not going to say you're going to go to hell if you smoke. No. But uh, you'll be healthier if you don't. I think that's <laughs> exactly. been established. <laughs> you can stick around a little longer. <laughs> uh -huh. Right. Um, I'm so thankful to have this amazing testimony because there's a lot of them out there like you. Yes, but there are. But we don't get them on. We don't get them out there enough. And thank God for Billy Graham, whose message was oh, salvation, yes, salvation, yes, yes. salvation. He will change you. Yes. He will make you better. Yes. He'll make your life better. And he stuck to his calling. Mm -hmm. I think that's why he always did so well. He didn't get off on any other thing. Nothing. He was just, just
just stuck to his calling. What a great man. Very true. And you are a Stonecrop speaker? I'm oh. a speaker trainer mm -hmm. and a speaker. I've been speaking for 30 something years mm -hmm. on the road almost constantly. Uh, I have. So for my viewers, uh, we've had the website up there and if you're looking for a speaker, you know, for any of your women's situations or for your church services or all, uh, this is a testimony and a message that really needs to get out there. I'm mm -hmm. so thankful that the Lord sent you our way. And don't forget the, the little dirt people here uh, for your grandkids, great gang, grandkids. I'm, I got eight grand, great grandkids and one on the way. So this I have book 10 will grands and nine great grands. We're, we're going to sit and brag about this a while, but for now, we are out of time. So um, I want to thank you so much for thank you being for here and drop by and see us again sometime. And I um, love that. you stay with me. I have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Wow, what a testimony. You know, if you've got family members that are not uh, serving the Lord, just keep praying for them. Well, I love that. I love to hear the great testimonies. And I want to remind you again of uh, this booklet that you can send any amount of money to help, help us defray the expenses of the program. Uh, this wonderful little book, uh, The Promise of Security by Beth Moore. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, there's a lot going on in the world today make us feel insecure. But you know what? The Lord never changes. So you can do it with your credit card or by writing to us, and we'll be glad to get it out to you. Aren't you just glad that you know the Lord in these troubled times? It seems like we almost get desensitized to just violence and the things that are going on around us. But whatever your approach to it is, you can have a firm foundation in Christ Jesus, certainly based on his word. And this little booklet will help you have those specific scriptures that will help you in your specific problem. Hey, join me next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.